Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. I figure let's start off with a shout out to Lay from Art of Lay who's been encouraging me to make a video about my art journey thus far. Down on the doobly-doo you'll find a link to her channel as well as where to purchase prints of this piece if you're interested and all of the materials used. A lot of artists have great stories about how they were practically born with a pencil and some paper in their hands because they can't remember a time when they weren't drawing, but I'm kind of the opposite. I can't remember a time when I was. As a kid, I 100% wholeheartedly and so very, very earnestly wanted to grow up to be a fire truck. I'm not even joking. This was genuinely my life goal. No idea where I came up with the idea, but I felt like once I realized I'd have a lot of difficulty making it a reality, I struggled to come up with a better plan. I mean, <laughs> come on, seriously, is there a better plan than growing up to be a fire truck? I'm pretty sure there's not. I remember at about this time when I was maybe seven or eight, I had a friend who taught me some basic doodles, like that nose guy. You know the nose guy, right? Everybody knows the nose guy. And she also taught me how to draw some kind of dragon or something. I don't really remember it if I'm honest. Together, we teamed up to create a magician duo called The Animorphs. Because not only were we magicians, we were also real life animorphs, just like the books. And we definitely could change back and forth between being a human and being an animal. Definitely. So we were gonna grow up to be magicians together with our bright yellow t-shirts that we had proudly puffy paint lettered with the Animorphs for all our talent shows. But then I moved away. So it was a little hard to be a magic duo when you had become a magic solo. So obviously my next choice in career, having moved to the desert wasteland of Arizona, was to become a marine biologist. Again, who even knows where I decided on this, but once I had proved my dedication by drawing dolphins with rainbow backgrounds on literally everything, there was no going back. I blame Lisa Frank. I think it's probably important to mention that I moved around a lot as a kid. Not for any real reason, it just seems like my family is made up of a bunch of nomads that struggle to stand still for very long. Throughout the majority of my school life, I didn't really have art classes for various reasons, and the few that I did have often got cancelled or I got pulled from for discovering that my superpower was that I could quite literally disappear. You may be thinking now that to say I was a strange child may be an understatement, and you'd be pretty spot on. My only real conscious exposure to art was through my fellow Animorph that I mentioned earlier. So when I moved yet again and was given the opportunity to choose between having art classes or having chorus, it may seem strange to you that I chose chorus, but I've always loved singing. It was during this phase of my life that I realized that singing could be a job and that I was good at it. I started doing a little bit of competitive singing, and I tried out for a local art high school. I started writing songs with a friend's parent who had a band, and proved I was the greatest Mariah Carey in our class at every free sing opportunity I got. But middle school was essentially the only time where voice became the most important thing I wanted to do. I still want to write music and make songs, and you basically can't ever stop me from singing while I go about my days. But I don't know that I ever saw it as a life goal any more than the other things I mentioned and abandoned. I think it was about during 8th grade that my ex almost stepmom, despite me not even knowing it, realized that I liked to draw and gave me a Strathmore sketchbook and a set of pencils. I clung to it like it was a life raft in the stormy seas. Sure, it was the only thing that could save me. At the time, I became obsessed with drawing armpits and fairies. Specifically, fairies with armpits. I remember that I would sacrifice every other piece of anatomy of a fairy as long as I could draw her wings, ears, and armpits. Covering her feet with bell bottoms was usually a stylistic choice because bell bottoms are cool and not because I couldn't draw feet. Obviously, this meant that I couldn't go to a regular high school, so I decided to go to a vocational high school instead. Even though at the time, I thought my love of bell bottom pants meant that I was destined to be a fashion designer and fashion design was not offered as a path of study. At my Votech High School, I dabbled in culinary arts, cosmetology, welding, and various types of media production, including print, video, and graphic design. I almost decided to go into welding because it's basically one of the coolest things on this planet, but I eventually decided to go into the graphic design area because it was kind of like drawing, but also because the teacher was a strong, strict woman, and like many broken children often do, 
I was searching for a mother without really understanding it. It turns out, while I'm pretty decent at graphic design, I don't actually really like it. And I accidentally officially made the connection that I liked to draw as my project designs became more and more illustrative in nature. This was the first time essentially in my life where I had been encouraged to express myself visually. I'd finally discovered that art exists and is more than just something you do with your hands to keep them busy while your mind wanders. Through finding out that I didn't like graphic design, I discovered that I did like art and needed more. So I went to art college. My experience at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia is one I wouldn't trade for the world. It taught me all the basic things I'd never learned in elementary school and high school like all the other kids, like the basics of color theory and how to use charcoal and that oil paint exists and what it means to draw someone in proportion or how to actually see a color for what it is rather than what I think it is. I realized while I was there how much I'd missed out on and I consumed knowledge with the veracity of an appetite that I still feel will never be sated. Among so many, many other things, I studied traditional photography, handmade printmaking, sculpture, woodworking, film noir, sequential storytelling, American Sign Language, and one of my great loves, bookbinding. Though I earned my degree in, specifically, digital illustration, which is funny to me now considering that I apparently vastly prefer working in traditional mediums now. Armed with my degree, a handmade and professional portfolio, and a couple hundred handbound mini comic books and promotional postcards, I burst forth into the world of 2009 to become a cashier, immediately followed by an overnight baker, an overnight bakery manager, and then a modeling talent representative at a place that ended up being a scam, so I left when I realized it. My next job was as the art director at a nail polish company, and when I say art director, I mean I was the entire art department and occasionally was in charge of scouting, vetting, and hiring additional freelance help as required, but I largely worked in-house for a company that I hated. In fact, I had such a bad experience with them that when I left the company, I completely stopped making art for about three years. No doodles, no weird sewn purses, no squishing clay in my fingers, no gluing random things together nothing. I was in such a deep depression, and I didn't understand it at the time, but living my life day to day just trying to get by and not making time for artistic expression because I didn't have any energy for it was, in fact, what was making it even harder for me to get the energy to act like an actual functional person. The closest I got to artistic expression was making elaborate and beautiful bento lunches every single day and briefly running a food blog. I went back to working retail because it was the only thing that I could find that would hire me. I ended up working for a place many of its workers jokingly call the fruit stand for almost five years before I almost collapsed and died and had to leave. But that's another story entirely. My time at the fruit stand also allowed me to become an educator of sorts, and I rediscovered my love of teaching people, something I'd experimented with throughout each new discovered hobby in my life and I had very recently reconnected with my love of creativity and creation. I'd realized I'd been asleep, stumbling through my life like a zombie, no feelings or passions or destination or dreams. I was just constantly moving forward, blindly, trying to make my way through the day rather than trying to make my way to the next day. I wasn't living for any reason other than to stay alive. A bad habit built out of necessity, but a bad habit nonetheless. So I decided to take a chance and found a loophole that allowed me to be an art teacher despite not yet having my certifications. To all the teachers out there and to all my fellow recovering teachers out there, I give you mad props for what you put up with. I made it through one single year of being a teacher at a public school and while I was at a very unideal school, the real problems I had were with the school system itself. At the end of my first and only year as a teacher, like nearly all first year teachers do, I was cut. They call it reduction in force. And see, because the school systems can't be sure it can pay for all its teachers before the year has started, they basically lay off all the teachers they can during the summer and tell them good luck with finding a job. And they do it every year. The idea that I'd have to fight for a new job every single year was just the cherry on top of the cake of reasons why I could not continue to pursue teaching as a career. So after a couple months of licking my wounds, I really sat and looked at myself looked at my incredibly ridiculously varied work history and looked at how much I could not let myself stop creating just to get by. 
So I said, screw it. I'm going into business for myself. And I'm finally going to do my art for real. You see, I've always had a problem with being able to answer that question of, what do you want to be when you grow up? As an adult who struggles with that question, even now really, I think I've decided it's okay not to have an answer to that question, or to have many answers to that question. Right now, I'm an artist and YouTuber who casually begs for your likes and subscribes while desperately hoping that I can make headway in this unbearably tricky industry, but maybe tomorrow I'll find a way to fold in some of my other interests. I've already been trying to find the best way to introduce y'all to my love of cooking, and even though I have absolutely no ability to play instruments or use music apps, I really want to make my own background music for these videos. But I think the most important thing that I've learned through the course of this journey is that there really is no right answer for how you live your life. Your path doesn't need to be linear. You don't have to have one great passion. You don't have to work for someone else if you can't stomach another day of it, and you are welcome to change your mind about anything, at any time, no matter how long you thought you wouldn't. If you'd like to share your journey, I'd love to hear your story. Whether your life has led you in one direction straight to something you love or hate, whether you've flim flam between this and that the entire way, or you only just realized after a long time of going in one direction it's time to make a change, I'd love to know more about you, now that you know so much about me, too. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and safe travels. Bye!